Sometimes an astrophysics research paper will get published and it'll get picked up by the press and covered on a load of news channels and websites. And in the process of, of writing it up and simplifying it down and then like trying to get a headline that everyone will want to click on, the meaning kind of gets lost a little bit on the way, right? <laughs> like a game of telephone. And by that point, you lot all see it and then get confused and then send it to me like, what is going on? And that is exactly what happened this month when I was buried in an avalanche of social media notifications about this news story. A black hole that is somehow forming new stars. Now, normally I'd save pieces of news like this for my monthly news recap series, my Night Sky News videos, but this is about one of my favorite things, black holes, and it's also really close to my own research too. So I figured, why wait? Let's chat about it now. So what happened was that a paper was published this month by Zachary Shute and Amy Ryans from Montana State University called Black Hole Triggered Star Formation in the Dwarf Galaxy Henais 2 10. And it was all about how the supermassive black hole in the center of this galaxy was causing new stars to form. Now let's just state this up front to clear up any confusion, right? That it is not the black hole itself that is making the new stars. Because yeah, it's a black hole. But it's actually because this black hole is what we call active. It is growing in mass by taking material from the surrounding regions of the galaxies to increase its own size. And unsurprisingly, that then affects the surrounding regions around the black hole of that galaxy where you will then form these new stars. Now, this is exactly what I look for in my research as well, but instead of the black hole causing new stars to form, I look for where the black hole stops new stars from forming. So how can growing a black hole somehow cause both new stars to form, but could also cause stars to stop forming as well? So to understand this, we have to understand the balance of forces around a black hole. So of course, yes, you've got gravity, very strong gravity because it's a black hole. It's pulling in gas from the surrounding regions. But as that gas comes in, in, it doesn't stay as a big blob of gas and just go straight into the black hole because the black hole is also spinning. Because whatever star that black hole originally formed from will also have been spinning and it's inherited that spin. And in the same way, when the gas comes in, it also gets caught up in the spin of the black hole. So it might start out as a big ball of gas, but it actually gets pulled into a big swirling disc in the same way that if you take a ball of pizza dough and you set it spinning above your head, you throw it up above your head, it flattens out into a nice flat pizza base, what you could call a disc. So the same thing happens to the gas around a black hole, but it's also the reason why all the planets in the solar system orbit in the same plane as well, because the gas cloud that formed the solar system, formed the sun and all the planets was spinning. And so it all flattened out into a disk. So if you have an active black hole, we have this disk of gas swirling and orbiting around the black hole. And the particles, the molecules of that gas get accelerated to incredibly high speeds due to the strong gravity around the black hole. They get accelerated to high speeds. That means their temperature increases and the gas starts to glow. It starts to give off light. Now that light given off actually exerts a force outwards in the opposite direction to gravity. It's actually something we call radiation pressure. Now you might have heard that term before, but in reference to space travel. Imagine a spacecraft that you attach a big metal solar sail to it so that when light particles given off by the sun impact with that solar sail, they transfer their energy to it and that speeds up the craft. In the same way that if you have a sailboat on the sea, right, the wind causes air particles to impact with that sail, they transfer energy to the boat and the boat speeds up. There's actually enough energy in sunlight to accelerate a spacecraft in that way. And there's even more energy given off by these swirling gas disks around black holes, a phenomenal amount. So much so that if enough gas ends up falling into this big swirling disk around the black hole, then the radiation pressure builds and builds until it is enough to actually turn some of that material back around again push the gas that's being drawn inwards by gravity back out again in something we call 
an outflow. Now it can do that because this swirling gas disk there around the black hole is nowhere near the event horizon, that point of no return where you'd have to be traveling faster than the speed of light and you would have officially fallen into the black hole. So gravity is strong in that disk, but not so strong that radiation pressure can't counteract it. And we get these outflows, sometimes even these big jets as well, that come again from the regions around the black hole, not the black hole itself. I usually like to call them black hole burps, you know, because it's like an active black hole is, is tried to take in too much gas at once and end up having to like relieve the pressure, right, with one of these outflows. But of course, if you have an outflow, you're essentially sending energy back out, rippling through the galaxy and the surrounding regions. And of course, that's then going to have an effect on it, either to churn up some of the gas in a galaxy or to heat it up or even to fully expel it, take it out of a galaxy entirely. And the thing is, if you start doing that to gas, the gas is what you need to make new stars. And so looking for the direct effects of what these big black hole burps or these outflows have is what I do in my research, but also what this paper that's been published this month has found as well. They actually used the Hubble Space Telescope to observe this galaxy, this HEN 2-10, and they were looking for gas that was moving. And they can spot this gas because every type of specific gas, whether that's oxygen or hydrogen or nitrogen, it gives out a very specific wavelength or color of light. So if you take the light from a galaxy and split it into its rainbow, its spectrum, into all of its component wavelengths, right, you see these huge big sharp peaks where you find oxygen, where you find nitrogen giving out light. But if that gas that's giving out that light is moving, and usually also it's not these big sharp peaks, it gets broadened, but it also either gets shifted either to bluer colors or to redder colors through a Doppler shift. And how much the shift is tells you how fast the gas is moving. So this is how Shoot and Rains spotted the outflow in this galaxy. But not only that, they also spotted that the direction of the outflow perfectly lined up with a little clump of newly formed stars, which you can see really clearly in this optical light image here is that bright point of light. So the hypothesis is that all the energy in that black hole burp, that outflow, has passed through what was this sort of quite a diffuse clump of gas and shocked it, caused it to clump together, get a lot denser, which gave gravity a little bit of a helping hand so that they could collapse and form new stars. A growing black hole causing new stars to form. And that is an incredibly cool result in itself. But what makes it even cooler is that they've spotted this in a dwarf galaxy, a smaller, less organized galaxy than the likes of the Milky Way. It's about a hundred times smaller than the Milky Way, this galaxy, but its black hole is around about the same size. So it's a great opportunity to learn about how black holes grow and how they grow together with their galaxies as well. But to stop any runaway growth of either the black hole or the galaxy, you need some process to regulate it. So we know that radiation pressure essentially regulates the growth of black holes. It's kind of like a, an off switch for a growing black hole, right? It's like, oh, you've eaten too much. Let's have that little relief of pressure in a burp. But also that process can regulate the galaxy growth too, because if you have that energy moving through the galaxy, it can either heat up the gas and stop the molecules from getting dense enough together to form a star, or it can expel the gas entirely from the galaxy. So there literally is no gas for to make new stars out of. That is what I'm searching for in my research, right? A black hole burp stopping a galaxy from forming more stars. It's a process that we call feedback, specifically negative feedback because it has a negative effect on the galaxy stopping it from forming stars. Compare that to what Shoot and Rains have just found, which is positive feedback, a positive effect on the galaxy because it causes it to make more stars. Somehow these black hole burps can do both. Now, obviously we have evidence here for positive feedback. And similarly, we have evidence in these very individual galaxies that negative feedback might be going on as well. But the kicker is that in these big simulations of the universe that we do, where we put all the known laws of physics into a computer and then set it running and see what pops out and see if it matches, you know, the observations that we make, 
In those simulations, we find this process of negative feedback, the black hole growth regulating the growth of the galaxy, stopping it from growing too big. It has to happen in these simulations, in like all galaxies, in order for our simulations to match observations. But we haven't actually found evidence of it happening on a big statistical galaxy-wide scale. You know, we haven't found it to say, okay, here's the galaxies that have an actively growing black hole, and oh, look, they have lower star formation rates, right? And it might be to do with the fact that the time scales are different, so a black hole is not active for a very long time, and so you have to wait, you know, 100,000 years plus before you actually see any um, effect to the star formation when the biggest stars start dying off. But it could also be that it doesn't actually happen directly as negative feedback. What if it's negative feedback, but positive feedback happens first? Like what Shoot and Rains have found here. HEN 2-10 is actually what's known as a starburst galaxy. It's making far more stars than than normal than it should be. Like it's going on some huge star formation bender, right? But if that's what it's doing, if it is using up its gas all at once to make all of these stars at once, then in a few million years time or so, it's not going to have any gas left to make any new stars because of its huge bender that it did. So if that's what the black hole in HEN 2-10 is doing, it's, it's, it's burping up because it's eaten a little bit too much and it's having to relieve that pressure in this outflow that is then triggering new stars to form, so much so that it is this huge big starburst galaxy now, then that will be positive feedback that eventually leads to negative feedback when all of those new stars start dying out and it's got no gas left to make any new ones. You know, it just happens through positive feedback first. So perhaps this result from Shoot and Rains about HEN 2-10 could end up being a very important piece of the galaxy black hole evolution puzzle. Before we get to everybody's favorite section, the bloopers, I just want to say a big thank you to this week's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform that gets you to learn by doing the way that, you know, I personally learn best. So I just think Brilliant is so good. They have this ever growing catalog of courses across math, science, computer science, whatever you're interested in that helps you learn concepts in a visual hands-on way so that you retain information better. One thing I think is crucial for understanding physics better and especially physics research is that you need to think through problems logically right brilliant has a great course on logical thinking again with fun interactive content that gets you to think very carefully about a problem and the next step in the logical chain for that problem essentially making sure you'll always be one step ahead mathematically speaking anyway So if that sounds like something you'd be up for, to get started for free, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on the link in the video description down below. And the first 200 people that go to that link are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, roll those bloopers. Like, oh my gosh, I should have looked up how to pronounce hen eyes. Hen eyes? I'm just going to call it hen. H-E-N 2-10. Yeah, that rhymes. <laughs> Stars to form as well. Well, to understand this, we left and fifth. So, how can growing a black hole cause both new stars to stars? Was that Becky? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just got really distracted. I'm reading through my notes on this video that I made, and like, I just keep noticing all of the five-letter words that would be like really good to start off Wordle with. Like, I'm like, ooh, dough. And like, heard. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, like double vowels, like triple vowels somewhere in there. I'm like, I need to, <laughs> to remember these. Like, point. A great word to start with. 